The Dark Lords of the Sith were the avatars of the Dark Side, the greatest extremes of a poisonous and unnatural current within the Force. Their amorality and dabbling in forbidden techniques granted them tremendous power, which they used to shake the foundations of the galaxy time and time again. They and their followers believed themselves superior beings, a superiority proven by their allegiance to the Dark Side and the strength they claimed to possess. But there was obviously much more to the Dark Side than the Sith sales pitch version of it, and there's more to it than a lot of Star Wars fans pick up on. Perhaps the best way to understand these hidden nuances of the Dark Side is to examine the lives of its staunchest devotees, which is what we'll be doing today. In this video, we'll be taking another look at Adjun Pal, the very first Dark Lord of the Sith, and discussing what his story teaches us about the Dark Side. Attention, Sergeant on deck! We've done a video delving deep into Ajunta Pal's backstory in the past, so we won't focus too much on the details in this one. To provide a brief summary, Ajunta Pal was a member of a sect of renegade Jedi who broke from the Jedi Council to study the dark side of the Force. These dark Jedi used their powers to transform living things into horrible monsters, so the Jedi went to war against them, a conflict called the Hundred Year Darkness. Ajunta Pal was the High General of the Dark Jedi during the Battle of Corbos, the final battle of the war, and he was one of only 12 to survive. With the other 11 survivors, he was banished from the Republic, forced onto a crumbling galleon and shot off into unknown space. By fate or the Force, Pal and his comrades ultimately landed on Korriban, the homeworld of the Sith species. Using the power of the Dark Side, the Exiles conquered the Sith and proclaimed themselves the First Lords of the Sith, forming the Sith Empire. Arjun Sapal became the first Dark Lord of the Sith, the Supreme Overlord of the Empire, and he and his followers combined Dark Jedi and Sith Pure Blood practices into an ideology that would plague the galaxy for millennia. The core of Arjun Sapal's story comes from Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, set 3000 years after his death and its framing within the game's narrative is important for understanding its significance. In KOTOR, the Sith Empire Ajunta Pal founded is long gone, and his once great fortress on Korriban lies in ruins. But another Sith Empire has arisen and laid claim to Korriban, and students from the Sith Academy are tasked with excavating the Valley of the Dark Lords, the former site of Pal's fortress and the current site of his tomb. The player character, the redeemed Revan infiltrates the Sith Academy as part of the main quest, posing as a student and aspirant Sith Lord, and they have the option of inquiring about Ajunta Pal and exploring his tomb. The Sith in the Academy provide a basic rundown of Pal's legend, breathlessly extolling his power and status as one of the very first Sith Lords. They speculate about the ancient fortress he built in the valley and how it fell wondering what enemies he had that were powerful enough to destroy it. But if the player decides to investigate Pal's tomb, they'll find that the modern Sith's understanding of Ajunta Pal's power is a little detached from reality. The tomb of Ajunta Pal, like the legends of the Dark Lord, is grand and imposing, attesting to enormous power and pride. When you reach Pal's sarcophagus, you find him buried with numerous treasures and valuable artifacts. But when you try and leave the final chamber of the tomb with your trophies, something unexpected happens. You come face to face with Pal's ghost, and he doesn't act at all like you would expect a great Sith Lord to. Too long, too long in the cold and the dark, I am disturbed again, uh, a human. Now this you don't see every day. This, this is an old spirit full of the Force. I sense great sadness and regret. Walk carefully. A Jedi here? Why have you come to this dark place, Jedi? Why disturb my sleepless rest? Ajunta Pal is a wreck. The first Sith Lord is miserable and full of regret, hating himself for everything he did in life. If you provoke him, you'll find that this isn't for lack of power. Even in death, Ajunta Pal is a fearsome opponent, but his power means nothing. Let's take a step back for a moment. 
To understand the rest of Revan's encounter with the Junta Pal, we need to understand more about the Sith and the Dark Side. As we've said many times before, the Dark Side was rejection of the will of the Force, the prioritization of selfish desires over the greater good, but Sith ideology went a bit beyond that. The beliefs of the Sith are best described in the words of the Sith themselves, in the code that Pol's shadow hand, Sorza Sin, wrote upon claiming the title of Sith Lord. Peace is a lie, there is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall free me. This defining code of the Sith is essentially a battle plan. The Sith used passion, strong emotion, to give themselves strength in the force from which they achieved power, victory, and eventually everything they could ever want, at least as they saw it. The Sith had very narrow definitions of all these key terms as well. Though all passions could fuel the dark side, the Sith only honored the negative ones. Though strength and power are relative terms, the Sith only acknowledged them insofar as they could be used to achieve hierarchical dominance over others, and victory to the Sith was only really victory when it was a conquest a subjugation of an opponent through superior power. The final stated goal of it all was freedom, which the Sith would define as a total lack of restriction achieved by being at the top of the hierarchy by crushing everyone else. The Sith Code was a battle plan, but an extremely narrow one written with some serious ideological vision. Ironically, considering their supposed goal of freedom from limitations, the Sith considered this single narrow approach the only worthwhile way of living. There were other core pillars of Sith ideology that weren't explicitly mentioned in the code, though they can be considered implied. Ambition, competition, hierarchy, and extreme individualism. In contrast to the ways of the Jedi, which the Sith viewed as collectivist and inherently weak, the Sith way was a constant, zero-sum, every-man-for-himself power struggle. Like many others who are woefully misinformed the Sith saw this as the purpose and only natural state of life. Everything to them was about trying to be the best, the most powerful, the unquestioned ruler of everything, the conqueror of all living beings. Most Sith dreamed of having the power to conquer death itself. Indeed, the well-known Sith title, Darth, came from a Rakatan phrase meaning conqueror of death. In life, Ajunta Pal embodied this ideology. He ruled as Supreme Dark Lord of the Sith for decades, and as his spirit endured after death for thousands of years, he even succeeded, to an extent, in achieving the ultimate dream of the Sith, and yet, he was still miserable. There's an interesting contradiction within Sith ideology. Past a certain point, it turns back on itself. The root of it all, the first goalpost of the Sith Code, was passion, but the end goal of the Sith the freedom from restriction that they craved required Sith to purge themselves of the bulk of their passion. For many Darksiders, the path to the Dark Side began with passions like love or righteous anger. But for those steeped in the Dark Side, these things would eventually become weaknesses. They require you to care about someone else, and if you care about someone else, then that limits the extent to which you can pursue ultimate freedom as the Sith envisioned it. To be at the top of the hierarchy, to put yourself above all other living beings, you eventually have to crush the ones you care about. To achieve the goals of the Sith, you would have to destroy what you chose the path of the Sith for in the first place. The Revenge of the Sith novelization puts this bit poignantly. You killed her because, finally, when you could have saved her, when you could have gone away with her, when you could have been thinking about her, you were thinking about yourself. It is in this blazing moment that you finally understand the trap of the dark side, the final cruelty of the Sith, because now yourself is all you will ever have. The Sith promised ultimate power, eternal life even, but for what? Any Sith that could achieve the ultimate aims of the dark side would be a hollow shell of a being, only able to value power for power's sake. The ideology of the Sith, with its extreme individualism and worship of constant competition, was anathema to all human connection. It trained its followers to see every other living thing only as competitors to be crushed. The freedom of the Sith, in reality, 
was a mental prison of constant paranoia, misanthropy, and spite. In KOTOR, many of the Sith on Korriban speculate about Adjuntapal's ancient fortress and what enemy destroyed it. But if you talk with Paul's ghost, you'll learn that all their theories were wrong. We hid from the Jedi, but it was not they who destroyed us. Is it not obvious what we did? We destroyed each other. We desired the secrets of each other to increase our power. We battled until finally our fortress rained down on top of us. Pol and the first Sith inadvertently killed themselves, battling until their fortress gave way and buried them. But it's evident from his tone that Ajunta Pal and his rivals destroyed themselves in more ways than the literal one. Everything that was truly worthwhile in life was detested by the Sith as weaknesses to be purged in order to make them stronger. Humanity was a weakness to the Sith. Their pursuit of strength required them to carve it out of themselves, bits by bits. Ajunta Pal was a shell of a man, a being who had destroyed his very humanity until he was completely hollow, left with nothing but pain and regret. He had all the power the Sith promised, and yet he was pathetic, his presence evoking pity, not fear. Such was the way of the dark side. But the story of Revan's encounter with Ajunta Pal doesn't end there. Before leaving Pal's tomb, the player has the option to suggest that he could return to the light. If I could return, oh my master, it has been so long and I regret so much. It took 3,000 years of being dead, but in the end, the first Dark Lord of the Sith, the founder and first embodiment of Sith ideology, chose to reject it and seek redemption. After suffering so long in the darkness, he finally found peace in the light. The dark side was not strength, or power, or superiority, or any of what the Sith exalted it as. It was misery, and it devoured those who embraced it. The Sith put on a great show of the glory and freedom they purported their ideology granted them, but in the end, all of it was a mask. The true nature of the Sith was best represented by the spectre of their first leader, a pitiful, tormented creature of pain and regret, alone in the darkness surrounded by crumbling ruins and the ashes of a dead empire. And for a disciple of the dark side, genuine freedom lay not down the path of the Sith, but rather in the choice Ajunta Pal made when Revan came before him, to renounce it all and return to the light. As a final note, remember that, though the Sith are fictional, their empty promises and self-destructive mindsets are not. Keep the lesson of Ajunta Pal in mind and live for something worthwhile. But what do you think? What are your thoughts on the dark side? Feel free to post this in the comments section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.